Before I get into this video, I want to address why I'm pretty much always wearing a hat in my videos at the moment. Uh, that's because I'm growing my hair right now. Uh, I don't even I don't even know what I want to do with it. I've just decided I want to grow it, and it's kind of in that in between stage at the moment. So until it kind of well, let's just say I'm not recording a video like that. So until my hair kind of sorts itself out. I'm wearing hats. But in this video, I wanted to talk about traveling with a camera um, when you're only taking a carry-on bag on board when you're flying with low-budget airlines such as Ryanair, who have quite recently changed their baggage policies. Again, uh, for many years, until very recently, it was always the case, even with low-budget airlines, that you could carry on even like a, a small wheeler case and put it in the, the overhead compartment. Now you can only put a bag in that overhead compartment if you pay extra. Um, otherwise, uh, with the likes of Ryanair, many other low budget airlines as well, I think EasyJet are the same. Um, if you only buy like a standard ticket, you can only take on a bag which the maximum dimensions of which have to be 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters. That is very small and it has to go under the seat. So if you're buying a normal flight ticket, you look for flight online, you see the price, you pay that price. You can only take on a small bag which must go underneath the seat in front of you. So not a lot of space at all. And if you're someone like me, who loves photography, is always doing photography, as well as making YouTube videos as well. I tend to travel with quite a lot of equipment. Um, so the current baggage policies makes that very, very, very difficult for me. So I'm gonna address in this video how uh, what I'm doing about that. So I'm flying to Malta in just a couple of days time. And it's actually gonna be the first time I've been away, been abroad, Done any traveling since before the pandemic started so we're talking over two years now and as someone who loves to travel and um, particularly when I lived in London I traveled a lot um, I used to go off on city breaks to Europe a different city break in Europe I used to go away every three weeks to somewhere new and then I'd use my annual leave to go on explore places further afield, you know, USA, Canada, um, Peru. So I really do love to travel. Um, so it's been tough not being able to do anything for the last two years. So I'm very excited to go to Malta in two days time. This is my my main camera, Fujifilm X-T2. This is the lens that I generally always use. It's a uh, 18 millimeter to 135 millimeter. So it's a versatile lens, very good for traveling actually. So this is my standard normal camera. Um, but yeah, because I'm only allowed to take on such a small bag, I won't be taking this. Like I say, I did consider paying extra to allow me to take on board my camera bag and all my usual equipment, but I'm, I'm, I'm only going away for a few days and I'm going, it's a trip, I'm going away with a couple of friends basically to celebrate my birthday and just catch up with my friends. And it's not really a dedicated photography trip, it's more just going away with my friends and having fun. Plus the fact that the price I would have to pay to allow me to take on another bag was basically like two thirds the cost of the, the flight tickets themselves, which seems a bit steep. It seems very steep, in fact. What they charge you to bring on additional bags when you consider the cost of the actual ticket itself, there's a real imbalance there, I think. So I just decided to go with the, uh, the, the basic option, not paying extra. So firstly, I had to solve the issue of baggage. Like say, the maximum size bag you are allowed to take on is 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So I found a website called Cabin Max, and it's a great website because you can actually search for bags 
um, depending on what airline you're flying with. So I'm flying with Ryanair, so I just choose Ryanair and it knows what their baggage allowance is. So it brings up any bags that they sell that fit within that allowance. So I just received this bag today. So they make bags which fit within their requirements, but are the maximum size you're allowed. So this is exactly 40 centimeters by 20 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So I know that I can fill this put as much stuff in it as I can and it will still uh, meet the requirements so I won't have any issues at all. So if you're looking for a bag um, to sort of travel with, Cabin Max um, is, is a good website. So then we have the issue of a camera. I am a photographer so even though it's a holiday uh, to sort of celebrate my birthday and have a good time and uh, a holiday with friends. I am still going to want to take photographs and do a bit of street and travel photography as well. Um, so obviously I will not be able to take this camera. Uh, but what I do have is a little compact camera here, uh, the Fujifilm XF10 this is. So I'm just gonna take this with me because it will easily go in that bag along with all of my clothes and everything else, toiletries and things that I'm taking. But even if I couldn't get it in my bag, that will easily just go into a pocket. So I'm just gonna take this with me, um, particularly because it's just a few days going away with friends. I, I won't necessarily even need a big camera like this. And it's just got me really thinking, really. I think a lot more people should seriously consider uh, using a compact camera because for traveling, they're just so handy and so ideal and convenient and especially as airlines kind of further restrict what baggage you can take online, online, on board without paying an absolute fortune. Compact camera like this is ideal for that. So as I say, this is the Fujifilm XF10. I've actually used it on quite a few trips abroad already as I've been traveling things um, I used it quite a lot in India uh, because when I visited India, it was so hot and so humid in a lot of places and so busy and so hectic and I didn't want to draw more attention to myself than I was already getting. Most of the time I was walking around cities in India, even though I had my main camera with me, most of the time I just used this because it was a lot more inconspicuous and in that heat and humidity, I didn't want to carry lots of heavy equipment and things anyway. Um, and this camera, it shoots RAW as well as JPEG. Um, it's actually got an APS-C sensor. So even though it's a small compact camera, it's got the same size sensor as this. So I'm not compromising on image quality at all. A lot of the times when I am, using this, even though it does shoot raw, a lot of times I actually just shoot JPEG because I absolutely love Fuji JPEGs. Um, Fuji colors are absolutely beautiful and you've got the different film simulations as well. So they're kind of like filters, uh, so you get different looks and they're really nice. So even just using the JPEGs gives you really great results. Um, if there was any compromise to this specific camera, um, it would be it's only a fixed lens, so no real options uh, for like optical zoom. That being said, this camera does actually have a digital teleconverter built in, so that gives you another couple of options of either a 35 millimeter equivalent or a 50 millimeter equivalent field of view, and you still get the same image size as well. So they say you don't lose any quality using that as well. And I think you have to look very, very, very closely um, to be able to notice any, any loss in quality there as well. So it does give me a bit of flexibility, but if you are traveling, you're going on a little city break, or you just like to go away on the odd little cheap flight uh, now and again, I would seriously consider 
Now, if you want to take a camera with you as well and photograph just family shots or the architecture or whatever it is, uh, I would seriously consider getting a compact camera and then just carrying that on board with you. And then you don't have to worry about paying extra to take on more bags. Um, uh, the art, as I say, I use the Fujifilm XF10. That's more of a, it's a great option for say street photography. Um, if you wanted something that gave you a bit more flexibility, there are a lot of great options out there. I would recommend looking at something like the, the Panasonic do a range of compact travel cameras, uh, the TZ range. So they have different models. There's the TZ70, the TZ80, the TZ90, the TZ100 and the TZ200. I think there's one or two others in there as well. Basically, I believe TZ stands for travel zoom. Um, all the cameras in that TZ range just have small differences. Um, some of them have a larger sensor than others. Some of them can shoot 4K videos, some of them can't. Some of them have a, a, a fixed LCD screen like this. Some of them have a screen that flips up. So it just depends exactly what you're looking for in that camera. Um, some of them have different optical zooms as well, but whichever one you choose, um, the cheapest one starts at 240 pounds and then they go up to like 600 pounds. So there's a big difference, but again, it just depends what specific features you want. One thing they do all have something they all excel at is the zoom. Now, some of these cameras have a 15 times optical zoom, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, just to give you an idea, um, I probably should have mentioned a couple of other cameras first. Uh, let's say you didn't want a Panasonic. Sony have a couple of very good options. Uh, their most recent compact camera is the Sony Z3 One. That's a very popular camera at the moment, particularly amongst YouTubers. Now, the optical zoom on that camera is 2.7 times. Now that still gives you the equivalent of a 35 millimeter equivalent of 24 millimeter to 70 millimeters. So that's pretty decent, but yeah, that's still only a 2.7 times optical zoom. Even the, the Sony RX100 cameras, uh, they are known for having particularly good zooms on them. That's why the RX100 cameras were very popular for a long time because they had such a wide zoom range on them. Um, with them, you're looking at 24 millimeter to 200 millimeter. Again, just to give you an idea, this is the equip. This is 18 to 135 millimeter, which is very, very good. Um, the RX100, 24 to 200 millimeters. So that's even more than something like this can give you. Or oh, it's maybe quite similar. So even those options by Sony give you a lot of flexibility, a good range of focal points there. Now, like I say, the Sony Z3 one, that's 2.7 times optical zoom, not to be sniffed at. However, the Panasonic, many of their TZ cameras have a 15 times optical zoom. That just completely blows the Sony or pretty much any other camera out of the water if you're looking for a large, a good zoom range. But even better than that, some of them have a 30 times optical zoom. So it's not even a digital zoom. That is all just done in the lens. So you're not losing quality. You know, you're not cropping into the file to zoom, that is all just done through the lens. So that 30 times optical zoom is giving you the equivalent of 24 millimeter to 720 millimeter. Now, if you wanted that flexibility, if you wanted that range on a mirrorless or DSLR camera, you would have to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands and carry very you'd have to carry multiple lenses and carry very heavy equipment. So to get that zoom range in a camera that you can fit into your pocket and that only costs a few hundred pounds, 
if you're wanting to travel and just take holiday snaps, um, I mean, that, it, it's amazing. And yes, you don't get the same image quality because it's a smaller camera, a smaller sensor. You're not going to get the same quality as you would in a big mirrorless or DSLR camera. But you can fit it in your pocket. You can carry it onto a plane without any issues. You don't have to pay for additional bags. You don't have to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands on big, heavy, expensive equipment. So I think compact cameras are very underrated. And I think as the world opens up again and we all want to start traveling again and airlines are getting more tight, more restricted with what they're allowing you to take on board without charging you a fortune, why not get a compact camera just to shove in your pocket and, you know, enjoy taking holiday photos with or travel photos with architecture photos, whatever it is. And the great thing about having a camera like this, what I really love about having this camera is that when I'm using this, when I have this with me, I literally will have it with me all the time. So when I'm in Malta with me, when I'm in Malta with me, when I'm in Malta, there won't be a time when I don't have this camera with me. Even if I'm just going to the bar on a night uh, with my friends, I will take this camera with me. Where if I was traveling with this, I'd pretty much only have it with me during the day when I was out and about walking around exploring. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to be carrying this around um, like on an evening when I'm going out for meals and drinks and things like that. Whereas this, I can constantly have it with me. I can have it around my wrist like that. I can put it in a pocket. So I will never miss an opportunity to take photos. And then just quickly, finally, I obviously make YouTube videos as well. I enjoy making videos and that is something I'm gonna wanna do while I'm away in Malta. So I need a video camera as well. So I have the DJI Pocket 2 camera. I can't show you it because I'm filming on it now. Um, but again, I, I tend to use that camera a lot for my videos anyway. And I love it because it literally does fit in my pocket. So again, I don't have to worry about um, taking it onto a Ryanair flight with me because I literally can put it in my pocket and it's not going to cause me any issues. I don't have to worry about, oh, can I fit it into a bag? So I'm going to be using that. So if you're um, wanting to make take videos while you're away, a lot of the uh, compact cameras that I've mentioned will take videos anyway. But if you wanted another option, um, the DJI Pocket is a fantastic travel camera for taking videos. It's on a three axis gimbal. So that gimbal just means you will get beautifully smooth footage um, always. And then you can do things like time lapses, hyper lapses using the camera as well. So you can get some pretty cool uh, effects some pretty cool video with the pocket camera, which again is another thing that I love about it. So yeah, there's a lot of options out there. If you want to do photography, you want to do videography, take videos whilst you're away traveling on a short city break or whatever it is, and you're restricted with what baggage you can take on board. So yeah, I, I think the compact camera should make a revival. Um, but I will, all, all the, uh, the bag, uh, the cameras and things that I've mentioned in this video, I will put a link to in the description. As I said, the website that I bought that bag from was called Cabin Max. So I'll put a description, a uh, link in the description for that as well. And yeah, very excited to go to Malta in two days time. First time I've been abroad in over two years. So it's going to be a lot of fun. As I say, um, it is my birthday while I'm there. So it's basically just me enjoying myself with my friends, celebrating my birthday. Um, so it's not a dedicated photography trip. However, I will still be doing photography, of course, while I'm out and about. I will still be doing a bit of uh, video stuff as well. So 
I don't know exactly, I don't have a plan in mind for a video, but I definitely will make some sort of video for my time in Malta. So keep an eye out for that. And any questions or any comments or anything, yeah, just let me know. And I will get back to you. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope this has helped. If it has, give it a thumbs up. And I hope to see you next time in Malta. Bye.